I'm now going to be moving on to Q&A. So the first question is, what can a parent do to help a child who has turned his or her back on Islam when teachers or parents couldn't give appropriate answers about the questions about ayahs leaving the child or teen in doubt and leading to deep depression? Okay, so I think I'd like to take a step back. So it's, it's saying that what can a parent do to help a child who has turned his or her back on his stem? I've had a few clients come into my office that this is their issue. They feel like they have doubt in Islam. Um, and, and part of it really a lot of times has to do with relationships. When a young person really uh, has a close relationship with th someone that reminds them of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Okay. When, and this is how the Rasul used to do things with, with those that were around him. Young people need strong, positive role models and relationships. This is key to their, even in during their, their stage of life, they are closer to their friends and their peers than they are to the adults and the parents in their life. That can end. I would say that, that that's one, one avenue, is who are they spending time with? The second avenue is, is it a mental health problem? Sometimes I get clients that come in and it's not necessarily a religious problem, it's a mental health problem. Maybe they're dealing with something a lot more deeper. They have emptiness because they're, they're dealing with, they're battling depression. Or, or maybe they have an internal voice, they have anxiety that's so up the roof that they, they have this internal questioning of everything all the time. And maybe this mental health issue is the issue that we should be addressing first before we really look into the concept of leaving Islam and atheism and, and those type of things. It's, it's really important also that you are someone who doesn't push that person away, that you're someone who is present and in the moment with that person, really connecting with them so that when they do have questions and they might come back, that they still know that you're somebody that can go back to. If you want to add on to that. I would just add one thing, which is um, that the Prophet وسلم, he never uh, turned people away who had questions. So everyone, including people who are coming to him, maybe with questions that would be considered like really out there, that he never made them feel like their oh. question, Sorry. like their question was, uh, you know, wrong or bad. And so they had the comfort level to be able to come to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and and tell him, for example, Ya Rasulullah, give me permission to do this bad action. Right? That type of relationship where they felt like they could open up and ask those kind of questions, it gave them the confidence to know that their questions weren't, you know, it didn't, they didn't define who they were. And so if we have that uh, opportunity open, especially for our youth, to be able to go to the right people and ask the right questions, and they can feel as parents... You know, that, that their parents, that they can go to them and talk to them about anything or ask them anything or at least open up to them without feeling like my dad or my mom's going to kill me if I ask this question or if I mention this. I think that's a very, very important thing because, you know, in Islam, asking questions, especially when it comes from a place of sincerity and really wanting to know, is actually, it's not something just recommended, it's something that we have to do. Right? And so when you have an environment where there's so much uh, going against a lot of the things that Islam is bringing and telling them, there's going to be a lot of questions as well. And that's okay. And that's in fact, that's good. Because if they're asking those questions, it means that they have a care, they have a concern. And so if we're able to allow them the, the opportunity and the forum to ask and to be able to guide them to get the right answers if we don't have them, I think that 
will help solve a lot of the issues, and Allah knows best. I just want to add also that it's very important that we're proactive and we're not reactive. So don't wait un until your young person is coming to you with those type of questions. You start first. Expect that when they become this preteen, teen age, that they're going to have a million and one questions in their mind because of the environment that they live in. They're going to have questions about Islam. So you start. Provide that information and those resources and those opportunities for questions where you, you tell them, this is why the Qur'an says this, this is why we have Islam, this is why, this is why. It's very important that you are proactive in that and you, you, you jump to it before they reach that point where they, where, where they have those type of doubts. So I'm going to attempt to lump a few questions together. Um, several people are asking about halal ways to cope with stress, anxiety, or depression. Um, somebody specifically specified stress coming from family. Um, and then also, what can people do if they see friends around them relying on um, dunya e items for their happiness or relying on not halal ways to cope with stress or depression? Okay, so there are many halal ways. Everything is halal except what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says is haram. So there are many halal ways for us to deal with things like, I keep forgetting about this one, many halal ways for us to deal with depression, even if it comes from family. We have so many examples from the, the, the prophets, you know, Prophet Ibrahim, uh, Ali Salam, his father was a, was was a, was a mushrik or a kafir, you know. So he, but he was still respectful with his father. Yeah, Abati, you know, when he called with his father, he was respectful. But it didn't necessarily mean that he had to, you know, succumb to the pressures of his of his father. And your family is are those that you create. So the Prophet Sallallahu and the companions, they had ikhwa. They had brotherhood and there were sisterhood with people that were not blood family. So you can create that support system that you, that you need. But there are other things. We talked about support system. Exercise, going out in nature, uh, really tapping into your creativity. It, you, we are creative as human beings. We are creative by nature. We are different than other animals. So we need that urge to be to be creative, and creativity can be in different things, different forms, they can come different forms, music, art, you know, dance, uh, whatever it is that you, that you find is artistic and that taps into that part of your brain is important. Those are all ways to be dealing with uh, uh, depression in terms of halal ways, to be dealing with depression um, in, in, in those forms, inshallah. Oh, and one more that's very important that we tend to forget you know, sometimes we separate it from mental health. Is spirituality? Spirituality is an is an extremely important part of your mental health and and dealing with depression. To be really to feel that there is a higher power that you're answering to, and that person that that being Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala cares for you and knows what is best for you. Yeah, I mean, the only thing I would add is that. Because uh, the question also mentioned that you know sometimes we see others relieving stress through uh, haram means, whatever those may means may be, and we also have to realize that uh, not to be fooled by those things as well. That sometimes those things may provide temporary respite or relief from that stress, but that usually those things in the long run will just increase the stress, will just uh, add to the problems rather than remove them. And how do we know that? Because of the fact that they're haram, right? When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes something impermissible for us, it's because the harm comes to us first and foremost, right? And as Sister Dua, she mentioned that, and this is something that Ibn al-Qayyim, he says, he says that, you know, of course, that you go and you try to seek help when you're dealing with stress and depression and difficulty, but check, make sure that 
the cause of that or maybe that restlessness that you're feeling has nothing to do or check that it maybe it might have something to do with your distance from Allah because he mentions he says that in your heart there is a hole that will never be filled with anything except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and no matter how much we try to fill it with anything else haram or halal that that thing it'll just that hole will just continue to to, to come out and to show until we realize that there is that area of the heart that needs to be uh, our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then that's when a person will be able to find a level of contentment that they won't find in anything else and that's what Allah tells us it's with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you can really find contentment and peace in your heart How should we deal with relatives who wish ill on you, have created problems for you, and have stirred unnecessarily, unnecessary family drama without venturing into Qatiya territory? Uh, it's kind of awkward because I have some relatives here, but alhamdulillah, none of them have done any of that stuff, so it's okay. Um, what I would say is, uh, you know, the, the Prophet ﷺ also gives us advice for this kind of a situation, right? Because we think, for example, you know, when we're recommended, or not recommended, but we're obligated to have Silatul Rahim, to maintain those ties of kinship. And so sometimes we think that that means, maintaining the ties of kinship means that, you know, they do something for us, so we do the same thing back. They give us a gift, we give them a gift back. So it's like a, you know, keeping things even. But the Prophet ﷺ, he said, that's not Salatul Rahim. He said, Salatul Rahim is that when they cut you off, that you do Salat to them, and that you connect them then. That's what it would mean to actually take that step and to have that Salatul Rahim, that thing that's so important. So, especially with family, we have to remember there's, there's always going to be a level of you know, tension and fighting and these kind of things, but to do our best to recognize again for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to maintain that tie of kinship to the best that we can. The line though that we draw is if it becomes something that is harmful for us or for our family in whatever way, in spiritually, physically, these kind of things. At that point, then it becomes more about, you know, it's not about, oh well, I'm gonna continue to do Salatul Rahm. You do your best, but if it starts to kind of veer into that territory, then you have to make sure that self-preservation takes priority, if that makes sense. And this is a much longer uh, thing, but hopefully that, that's a little bit of a, yeah, it covers it a little at least. I'm going to take one final question. Um, my sheikh doesn't relate to my interests, being anime and especially Naruto. It's creating a clear divide between us, and I would like to have a better relationship with him. Any advice? I didn't know who asked that question. <laughs> Yeah, that's me. That's me. That question is directed to me. Uh, I know who asked that question too. I'm not going to say where they are. But I'm <laughs> um, yeah, I don't like anime <laughs> or Naruto. It's a, it, what's amazing, and this is very off topic, but someone, one of our, our youth, he told me that he watched 200 episodes of a show in, in a week. 200 episodes. I mean, I didn't even think that's possible time-wise. Um, but I, the, so I, I'm sorry, I just got stuck at that. Was there an actual question there? Or the <laughs> How do we bridge the gap? <laughs> oh, okay, okay, yes. Yeah, I mean, we still have a good relationship, even though we don't agree on Naruto. So if you, f you can find something that you may have 
interest in. And if it's something that there's benefit in, try to get them to uh, actually partake in it. Maybe they'll enjoy it. Anime in Naruto is definitely not one of them, though. Thank you. <laughs> I think, you know, I'm not going to address the anime, but, but I, I think we also, as young people, we have to move away from being passive. Well, this person is not listening to me, or this person is not interested in me, or this person is not, you know, it's true. A lot of adults don't listen to the young people. I'm with you. But we also have to take a proactive role in connecting with our elders and connecting with the people that are around us and say, hey, this is important to me. Well, why don't you like this music? Or why, why are you? And, and have the conversation. Don't just shut down right when someone says, oh, you know, what's that? You know, like be proactive in, 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 in mentioning who you are and saying this is what's important to me. And, this is, and, and by the way, the, the young people during the time of the Rasul were like that. They weren't like, oh, oh, well, you know, this person's busy, oh, so I'm not going to... No, you know, there's the retreat of a ta'if, the siege of a ta'if. I think it was after the Battle of Hunayn. The Prophet wasallam he told the young people there, it's time to retreat. And, and they were, uh, they had, uh, what's the word, hamas. They were like, no, we really, really want to do this. This is, this, is, this is energy. They had energy. They really wanted to, to continue to fight. And the Rasul said, okay, let's, let's fight. And then when they started fighting, they realized, okay, this is a bad idea. And then they said, okay, let's retreat. And then the Rasul ﷺ retreated. So it's okay to tell, to say, no, I think this is what we need to do. Because it, it allows that opportunity for conversation and to open up the, the, the communication between the elders and, and the young people. But uh, uh, there's a, there has to be a balance. The, the, the elders need to listen to what the, old, the younger people want to have to say. And the younger people also need to hear the wisdom behind what the elders have to say, but also assert what are the things that you really want to talk about.